Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is the update to the Lazy Sork, the easiest one bar build in the world. I know that's a bold statement, isn't it? But find another one that's easier. This has everything you need. Other builds may have some more bells and whistles and extra skills for you to try and track, but as a simple build, what's the point in that? That's not a simple build, that's a complex build with one bar. There are ways to make things very, very simple and effective at the same time so that you can do more damage for less effort to give you more time to pay attention to mechanics. I understand that the vast majority of the community have what is called average DPS. And when people say average, the assumption is that it's 70 or 80 or 90k. Bullshit, it's not. That's probably the average of the Not Safe For Work Discord channels that sit there and show off screenshots. The actual average is very, very low. The average is somewhere between 10 and 20 at most. Well, this build is going to guarantee in content, no matter what, that your DPS is going to double or even triple if you're in that area without extra effort. Now, the point of this build is, again, to make sure that you can apply the damage that you've always wanted to do, but you can spend more time on mechanics than you can looking at your bar and all of your survival is built in. Less complication, more stuff done. Now, it has, and I'm going to go over these in detail later, but it has everything you need following from this. It has single target DPS, area of effect DPS, sustainability, you'll never run out of juice, heals that you don't really have to maintain too much, maybe once every half a minute, rather than spamming when you're low, survival in the form of resistances that you don't have to apply, survival in the form of a damage shield that you can use if you need to, and more survival in the form of block mitigation if you get caught short. Everything is there, including an execute, and for the majority of the time, you basically just need to use one button and a heavy attack. Now, if you wanted to make that more complicated, then of course you can, but that takes away the point of the build. For you, you can change what you want, but as the full final product, the way I'm delivering it, everything is where you need it. If you take off any survival skills and replace them with damage, you weren't looking for the easiest build in the world because you've just made it more complicated. That is a choice, but I'm delivering it this way on purpose. Now, if you would like to hear all the intricate details about how this actually works, then of course all that is now coming. If not, if you want to skip ahead to the all the gear and no idea section, then of course you can go there and just put the gear on and slap stuff in the face. Absolutely fine either way, but just bear in mind if you ask questions that are already mentioned in the video, then there's no point in me answering those comments. So first of all, we're going to go into the stats, put on our buffs and bonuses. Done. Now, we are on 35.4k max Magicka, 28.4, almost 28.5k max Health, and 13.2k max Stamina. Just bear in mind that Health can go up to about 30.4-ish if you have a Warden in your group. Spell Damage is 4.6 at the moment, but that can go up quite dramatically with buffs and bonuses from your group. And our Resistances is 24k and 20.4k as well, which is quite handy. We are actually really, really tanky up front without any additional bonuses required. Pen-wise, we're sitting on 5.3. You can actually push that to 6, but that requires you to change one light piece of armor to from a medium to a light. We are on 55% crit. Again, if you change that one piece, that would be 56. But in combat, if you've got minor prophecy, then of course you can take advantage of that and you'll actually be about 61, 62%-ish. Now, we are using all of our attribute points into Magicka because we don't need them anywhere else. Our health is covered, our survival is covered, our resistances are high, our stand bar is nice with a really good recovery bonus as well, so we can use that to break free, dodge, and block. And we are using max health, max Magicka food. That looks like it doesn't give you any bonuses, but that's a bug, it's been there forever. Basically, you have 5.3k maximum health and almost 5k maximum Magicka. Highest flat bonuses you'll get from a two-piece bonus piece of food in the game. So you just use flat blue stuff. There's three different variants to it. They're all on the website. All the information's there. Loads of buffs. And look at the timers. None of them are running out. We'll go over that more when we get to the gear. But we're using the Thief Mundestone. Now, I'm going to go over the skills in detail again. If you want to skip this stuff, you can. But just bear in mind, I'm going to go over things that are very, very crucial towards the build's construction so that you can understand them when you're in content. Technically speaking, you can pretty much wall down heavy attack and live, but if you want to know how it all works in more detail, then stay tuned for this. So, first of all, is quite simple. This is in the Daedric Summoning skill line. Fifth ability to unlock starts off as Bound Armor, morph it to Bound Aegis. Don't touch this skill. Leave it on your bar. 
If you leave it on your bar, you've got an increase to max magical by 8%, which is a whopping bonus. In fact, the biggest one piece bonus or one skill bonus that you can get for Magicka in the game. Nightblade has similar. Um, Inner Light, I had to think about that one, actually has 1% less even with the passives. This also gives you minor resolve, increasing your resistances all the time. Minor Resolve and Major Resolve do stack. They are a minor and a major of a, of a specific buff. One gives you nearly 6k resistances, one gives you nearly three. Those two combined, we've got almost 9k resistances across the board. All you have to do is leave this skill there. However, if you are aware of how this skill works, and if you can work actively in content, and you do get in trouble, and you have to block something quite big, maybe a boss is on you for some reason, then if you activate this and then hold block, your block mitigation is up, which is really, really handy in oh shit situations. 40% block mitigation is more than that of a sword and board passive. You're effectively a tank for the time being during that heavy. Again, that only lasts for five seconds, but it's very, very strong. Also, if you do activate it, you get 20 seconds worth of minor protection, which means you take 5% less damage. You can actively maintain that buff, but generally speaking, you don't need to. That should be on our bar anyway which it is, so the minor protection is technically irrelevant for this build, but at least you understand the skill. So, leave it, don't touch it. If you need to block anything big, activate it first while holding block. So, and hit and take the hit. Done. You can cast from underneath your block. Happy days. Don't spam it, there's no need. Wall of Elements. Destruction Staff skill line. Unstable Wall of Elements because this one pops at the end. Bear in mind when I say at the end, I mean if it runs out or if you recast it. Because if you recast it, the last one ended and the new one started. So, that explodes at the end. If I recast it, there's the boom. There's another one. There's another one. That's going to be relevant later. That is how you do extra DPS from a skill that has a long duration. So, don't activate this unless you need to. Keep that up all the time. Now, the reason this is um, different to what you can see here is because it's actually done or benefiting from a shock staff. Different elements will make this work differently. But because we're using lightning, this does shock damage every one second. And if the enemy inside of this wall becomes concussed, which is a side effect of lightning, it's a chance-based status effect, then you will knock them off balance for seven seconds. This is crucial to the build as well, because we need people to apply off balance in order for us to get the most out of our damage. Off balance will allow you to do an increased amount of damage with your heavy attacks. You would do 70% more and you will get back double resources. So while something is off balance, you hit harder and you get more back. Bear in mind, of course, there is a timer restriction for that. So there are seven seconds uptime of off balance. And after that is finished, that target will be immune for 15 seconds. Then once that immunity is worn off, you'll be able to do it again. So over a 22 second period, you will have seven seconds of that as a window for you to take advantage of. Technically speaking, we're going to be heavy attacking all the time, so it doesn't really matter. It's going to be guaranteed, but just learn to pay attention to that. And what you're looking for, I will demonstrate this on the big dummy, actually. The buffs and bonuses are irrelevant, but um, the debuffs above his head, because most people don't realize target dummy comes with off balance. Technically, we need to put our wall of elements down and do concussion damage to apply off balance, but this has it already. So... See the blue one on the left-hand side? That is off balance. Lasts for seven seconds. Once it's run out, it will change. That is the immunity. So on the very far left-hand side of the dummy, that is the buff or debuff you're looking for. It's the blue one with the obnoxious guy standing there looking like a hero. When that has run out to zero, that's when you can trigger it again. So 15 seconds downtime, seven seconds up. Hopefully that made sense. Pay attention to that. But technically, I mean, we're going to get up a default anyway. Next ability is Hardened Ward. This was buffed to hell. Hardened Ward starts off as Conjured Ward. Morph it to this one. Basically, this used to be 60% of your max health, but now it's 72. And this has so many different ways you can use it, depending on your build, because it now scales off of maximum magicka or maximum health. So whichever one's the highest. If you're a tank and you've got loads of health, scales off of that. If you're a, a DPS and you've got loads of magicka, scales off of that. If you're a stam DPS, you're obviously going to have more health than magicka, so it scales off your health. So now even stam sorks can use it. But basically, if you're in trouble, activate this, and this will protect you for up to 17k health. We have 28-ish. This is more than half of your health. 
It's a massive, massive damage shield. And if you get buffs and bonuses from your group to increase your health, then of course that will contribute towards it and make it stronger. It is capped at 72% of your maximum health, but you'd have to have a hell of a lot of health to get there. So activate this and keep it up at all times. This is here for passives, unless you need to block with a big hit. And this is here in case you're in trouble. If you're not in trouble, just leave it there. It's got passives attached to it that make you do more damage anyway. So, so far we've got one active skill and two for emergencies. Remember, if you took those out for DPS skills, that's two more complicated skills you've got to deal with and less survival. So this is default. Next is Critical Surge. This is your longest skill that you have, and it's very easy to apply. Starts off as Surge, morph it to Critical Surge. It will give you Major Brutality and Sorcery, but we've got that built into our set anyway, so that's not that important. But it will last 33 seconds. Every single second that you do damage, if you crit once a second, you will heal. And that can be quite substantial when you've got buffs and bonuses from your group. It's very hard to kill you. So the trick to this is, so far, keep the wall down to do damage. And apply that. For the next 33 seconds, you don't need to cast that skill again. And every time this runs out, you just recast it. That, in a nutshell, is pretty much it. Anyway, don't let that run out. Next up is Mage's Wrath. This is a choice. You don't have to have this if you don't want to, but it does give you passives, bonuses from this skill line, and I'll explain that later. But basically, when the target is below 20% health, activate this and it will be stronger, and it counts as your execute. The trick to this is not to light attack, spam, light attack, spam, light attack, spam, because remember, we've got to keep up our resources. The trick to this is maintain your heavies and just fire this at the end. I'm going to get to that in the rotation later, but you never use this until the target is 20% or lower. Now, you still maintain this wall of elements, but this is now introduced. Shooting Star. Yes, you'll need Mage's Guild 10 for this. This is uh, God Mode Ultimate. Until they nerf this, and quite frankly, they should. I don't want them to, but they should for the sake of balance. See critical thinking there. This fires a meteor out of the sky, does flame damage on impact, knocks stuff down, stuns stuff for two seconds, puts damage over time on the ground in a form of flame, and it gives you 12 ultimate for every single target hit. Yes, that's loaded as hell. Not too bad cost-wise in comparison to other skills, plus you get most of it back if you're in a room full of enemies. This is bonkers. Now, we're going to do this very briefly because this is not part of the rotation as such, but you do need to apply this whenever you get the opportunity to, and you want to do it in a crowd. Because as you can see here, I know this is a very big crowd. We'll use the smaller one. Watch my ultimate. 121 instantly, and that's without including the light attack bonuses. So when you light attack or heavy attack, you get 3 ulti a second. You don't have to do that every second. It's just for 8 or 9 seconds on top, but... There you go. It's not that difficult to uh, get that back up to full and just spam it again. Anyway, that is a broken ultimate, and I don't think you should leave home without it. You do need Mage's Guild 10, but it's mental. However, if you don't have that, don't worry. What you can use for the time being is you can use the Storm Atro. Now, I recommend the greater one because it tends to do a little bit more damage on this particular build, but it's entirely up to you. You do have the AoE one, which is also really helpful, but again, the damage type is slightly different. This one is every second on single target, and this one is um, on single target with bursts occasionally. Technically speaking, we're using the Lightning Staff, so those bursts will be nice, but this one is actually a little uh, stronger up front. Both of them give a major Berserk bonus to the group if they take the synergy, so it is very, very helpful. But just bear in mind, if you do choose the AoE one, while your single target will be a little bit less, you will benefit from guaranteed concussion effects. So every two seconds, you concuss the targets. That guarantees off balance in Wall of Elements. So that could tip the scale. So the choice is technically up to you. But this does have higher health, so if you are in a situation where your pets can die, it'll last longer. Now, what you can also do is you can take advantage of the death royalty. Nice and simple. Get I, not Eye of the Storm, not that one, not that one that sticks to you. This one, Elemental Rage. If it's Lightning, it lasts two seconds longer than the basic skill. And also, it will do Lightning damage in air of effect for that duration. It is quite expensive, but it devastates a room. So the choice is yours for the time being. But once you've got Major Skill 10, get that skill. Now, passives. So these will start making sense now, hopefully. Ah, one more thing before we do. Swap outs. If you are a little more advanced, a little more, I don't mean make it really complicated. If you are a little more advanced and you want a tiny bit more damage out of the consistent DPS rather than just at execute, because bear in mind, that's when it peaks, then you can have a couple of swap outs. If you've used the Easy Sork in the past, you'll know how this particular skill works. This will allow you minor prophecy to your group. So you've got extra crit chance, as you can see here. We are now... 
at 61% crit chance rather than 55 on the spell side of things. But these mines individually can go off at least once a second. So what you can do is during your rotation, if you can aim them, again, this is slightly more advanced if you want to challenge yourself. If you aim the target between their feet almost, this will pop right in the middle. One can pop a second. Three, two, one, pop. Now the rest will not because they haven't reached. But something else can run in here and pop them as well. Or you can aim a little sharper. One will pop, then the other one will pop afterwards. That takes some practice. So when I said to start with aim between their feet, that is correct, but you've got to be very, very specific. So if you are familiar with 3D models and how gaming development actually works, th that particular model there is grounded. If you can hit the center of the hitbox where it is grounded to, that's when it will go off twice. So there's your first one, then the next one will go bang afterwards. Anyway, that is something that you can weave in there if you want to. And because we've got infinite resources, that's easy to easy to uh, apply and not run out of juice. Fair than that, your other options are, and I would not recommend these normally for everyday players because this is going to be confusing, but these are options you can change if you want to. The torment, the Tormentor, I can get words right, the Summoned Twilight Tormentor, that was difficult. This particular pet can die in content, so be careful, but if you can maintain this, then great. Basically, you just activate it and then leave it alone. That will do damage the whole time to the target that you're heavy attacking. But that does come with a bit of a twist. It will do more damage if you activate its special ability and leave it running for 20 seconds. But once the target is below 50%, then you never want to press it again because it stops getting this benefit. So that's fire and forget DPS. Nice and easy, but it does get in the way and some people don't like them. So this is technically a no pet build and I don't want to make things overcomplicated for you. So again, execute on the bar, only use it when they're low health. That's the simplest way to do it. You have got a couple of other options if you really want to, and they are quite easy to fire and forget. Structured Entropy is one where you get healing every two seconds as well if you want more survival, or Scolding Rune. These two, both decent damage over time. This one will technically do a bit more apart from the burst on this one, but you can get heals from it. So if you really wanted to, you could just maintain Wall of Elements and that, and just Heavy Attack. But again, the choice is yours. Two healing skills, or an Execute, or a pet, up to you. These all have their own benefits. None of them are really game-breaking regardless. If you want to keep it simple, keep to what I already suggested. Right, now we're going to go into passives. Dark Magic, nice and simple. Reduces the health, magic, and stamina cost of your non-core combat abilities. Excellent, that helps all day long. That means uh, your skills, your ultimates and stuff, they're all cheaper. When you hit an enemy with the Dark Magic applied ability, you will heal. So if you are using Daedric Tomb for whatever reason, like I just explained a moment ago, anything that gets hit by this, once it goes boom, and immobilizes by the way, not stun, immobilizes, this will also heal you. After blocking an attack, your next stamp, magic, or health ability will be cheaper. So if you are in a situation where you need to block, your next skill will be cheaper. Even if you do this, nice and handy. Uh, missed one. And of course, when you cast a Dark Magic ability, you get Minor Prophecy for you and the group, increasing your crit rating by 1314. Technically speaking, 1% 1 crit is 219. Don't know why they still use numbers there instead of percentages, but they do. So, as you saw earlier, it was 55%. And if I activate um, a Dark Magic ability, which I did briefly show you a moment ago, I will put this on the bar for now. My crit rating on spell is 61.1 instead of 55.1. That does make a difference. If someone else has got it in a group, then whatever. But if not, if you want to bring it, one of those will do it. Daedric Summoning. This is actually quite important because we are using a couple of abilities from this skill line. You restore 300 magical or stamina when one of your non-ultimate Daedric Summoning abilities ends. The resource returned is dictated by the ability's cost. So if you use a damage shield and it runs out, you will get magic back. So that was quite simple. Reduces the cost of your ultimates. Gets our ultimates nice and cheap. Increases your health and stamina recovery by 20% when you have a Daedric Summon and Ability slotted. We have actually two, three of you have the pair. They don't stack on each other, it's just if you've got one on the bar, we do. So we've always got stamina recovery and health recovery. It's good for our survival and for the sustainability of our stamina bar, which we need to dodge, break, and block with. Increases your maximum health by 8% for having a Daedric Summon skill active on yourself. We do. While technically this is only active when you cast it, this is active all the time. The bonus to this is passive. We always get that bonus to our health. So we're tankier. Stormcalling is nice and simple. Increases your magical recovery. Not that we need it, but we've got it. 
Increases your physical and shock damage. Yes, we're doing pretty much all lightning damage apart from our ultimate, unless of course you're using the death royalty. And that means that that damage type is enhanced. Increases your damage done against enemies by 1% for every 10% current health they have. That may sound a little confusing, but basically the more health they have, the higher your burst is. So if they've got 100% health, you have a 10% increase to damage. If they have 5%, a 50% health, you have a 5% increase to all damage. And it goes lower and lower and lower, the lower their health, down to 1%, down to the 10% and lower. However, that just means that you've got more damage up front. The way that we're built, we still do more damage at execute because we actually have an active execute on the bar. So while it dips and dips and dips, it then goes back up again. Plus we've got Bloodthirsty on our jewelry, which we're coming to in the gear, and that will push it further too. So it starts off really high, goes down a little bit, and then goes back up again. Bit of a roller coaster for DPS. Increases your weapon and spell damage for every sorcerer ability slotted on your bar. The only one that isn't, well actually two, the only two that aren't sorcerer abilities are Shoot and Star and Unstable Wall of Storms. Everything else is a sorcerer ability, so we get 2% for each. 8% on the bar. Technically speaking, yes, if you had the Atro as your ultimate, that would be another 2%. Now, we're using a Destro Staff, just one, really simple. Your Lightning Staff heavy attacks do 100% of the damage done to surrounding targets. So it used to be a little different to this, um, but basically the damage you do on the single target will be spread amongst the rest. You cannot crit the splash damage, but you can crit the single target damage to make the splash damage higher. So if you attack a target while you have off balance present, you'll do 70% more damage. If you crit, you'll do more damage. And if you have in power, which we do, we'll come to that later, that will give you an 80% increase to damage as well. They all stack to together, some are multiplicative, some are additive, but regardless, over time, with all these bonuses stacked up, they make a big, big difference. One massive crit during off balance with empower is going to devastate an entire room. Basically, this is how it works. You will see lots and lots of numbers rather than just one. Actually, we'll do it over here first. You can see over here, this is a heavy attack. One target getting hit by it. Great, beautiful. Now, over here, because there are targets, they all get hit by the damage done on the one in front. 18.9, they all get hit by 100% of the damage done. But bear in mind, that one has got minor vulnerability on it, so that one's getting hit a little bit harder. These ones as well, there's no cap on it. They all get hit. Fabulous. So the higher the heavy attack on that target, the more damage and error of effect you do. That leads into one of the other passives in a moment. Your destruction staff abilities ignore 10% of the enemy's spell resistance. That includes your lights and heavies and wall of elements, our main bread and butter of the overall setup, actually. Increases your chance to apply status effects by 100%. That doesn't mean 100% chance to cast any status effect. That means 100% of the base. This is inside the game in the help section on the tutorials for elemental effects, but basically your error of effect abilities have a 1% chance to proc their status effect every tick. This will make that 200%. Then we've got points in our champion points to increase that furthermore and so on and so forth. However, we do have a shock glyph on our front bar, which you'll see in the gear section, and that has a 20% chance at base per tick. And that's going to fire really, really fast. This enhances that by a further 100%, so it's now up to 40. And then we have champion point passives and bonuses for another 60% as well. So basically, we're at the point where it's almost 50-50 proc per tick on the uh, glyph itself. Which means you can almost, in most situations, nearly guarantee off balance, at least during the, the fight itself. It's not going to happen every single time, but it will happen a lot. And... If someone else is bringing off balance anyway, it's still a win-win. So here's an example. You're, you're looking for off balance on any of these targets. Fire, please. There you go. And again. And again. And again. It's starting to tick over now. We're starting to get somewhere. You get the idea. And the same will happen with this as well. Off balance all over the place. And again. And again. And again. If you heavy attack any of those with... Um, your lightning attack, you will do extra damage to those. And it's going to happen all the time. Has a cooldown, yes, but it also has a very, very good uptime. You can almost guarantee it straight away, if not within the first couple of ticks. You have more control over that than anybody else, unless they've got an active skill that does it. Now, um, one more thing you need to consider. Oh, no, there's two more, actually. Your lightning staff increases the damage to your area of effect skills. The splash damage 
is actually area of effect. So that is, that is enhanced. This wall of elements is area of effect, as is the pop at the end. So that is enhanced. And something else is as well. This pop at the end of the heavy attack also contributes to that. So all of the stuff we're doing is area of effect. And this one here, Major's Wrath, actually explodes on impact if the health is low enough. If it's below 20%, it gets an increase to damage, but it pops too. That also counts. So everything we're doing, including the area of effect hit from this and the damage over time, everything we're doing is area of effect. So the lightning staff obviously boosts every single ounce of it. Now, when you kill an enemy with a destruction staff, you'll get magic back. That's going to happen all day long. And when you absorb damage with a destruction staff damage shield, you'll get magic back. But that only applies to the ice staff. So that's not important. Now, there are variants to this particular build, and I'm going to go over them in detail in the gear section because there are a lot of questions out there that sound exactly the same as everybody else, but nobody really has a proper answer other than that's burst. I was actually done proper testing on this outside of hitting the dummy. Lucky for you, I have. So I can explain what you do and don't need and where the differences are if you're interested. If not, then just skip that part and go straight to the website. Anyway, light armor is what we're mostly using for this particular build. So you want to take advantage of these passives here, which are reduction to effectiveness of snares applied to you. So you're faster in a snare. You have reduction to cost of sprint, so you're very, very fast. You have increased magical recovery and reduction to cost from magic skills. That is nice, but technically irrelevant because we're never going to run out. This increases your spell resistance and this increases your crit chance. So 219 per piece, which is 5% uh, overall because we've got five pieces. And this increases your physical and spell penetration by 939. Currently, that's 4.6, almost 4.7. You can get that to about five and a half almost if you want one more piece of light armor and that will give you 1% crit chance as well. Choice is yours, however, depends on how you want to play. Medium armor, we're using one piece of this. You are going to take advantage of these as well, obviously. Increased critical damage per piece. It's small, but it still counts. Increased stamina recovery and reduction to stamina cost of um, of uh, stamina skills. The second part of that is useless because we have none. Unless, of course, you wanted to use caltrops, which you can. That will give you a, a pen bonus to the target or debuff. But um, still, that's mostly not going to be effective for us. The part that is is the recovery because if we dodge roll, we want the juice back nice and quick. Sneak is not that important, but we've got it anyway. Increases weapon and spell damage by a flat bonus and increases your movement speed and reduction to dodge rolls cost. Bear in mind, by the way, this is missed quite a lot. The light armor bonuses actually are very, very handy for our maneuverability because while we have reduction to dodge, dodge roll costs in medium, we also have it flat out as a 3% bonus for using light armor um, in here as well. So again, this is for each piece, but it's a massive, massive reduction overall, which isn't stated down here. Also, your movement speed in sneak is reduced, great, but reduces the cost overall of break free. So while our bashes are more expensive, our ability to uh, block, dodge, and break free is actually pretty damn good, even though we're in light. We are using one piece of heavy. This increases our physical and spell resistance per piece, health recovery and re return from resources if you get hit, maximum health, increase to stamina or magicka depending on the weapon type. For us, it's magicka. If you do a heavy attack, and increases your heal and receive. These are all minor bonuses because we're only using one piece, but they are relevant nonetheless. We are not using any Fighter's Guild. We are using Major's Guild, but you don't need any of these passives, strictly speaking, because they're not really going to benefit us, apart from maybe this one here, which increases your um, at maximum magicka and maximum recovery. Recovery is not that important because we're covered, but the maximum magicka can contribute to extra damage. So, I mean, this one is good. This one increases the duration of the abilities, so technically that would enhance the dot, but sometimes you're going to spam it anyway, so that's hit and miss. But the other ones, I mean, reduction to cost is not that important because we're covered. You don't need Empower because it's built into the set anyway. If you've got the spare skill points, get these two, but it's not the end of the world if you miss them. For now, at least, anyway. Undaunted, of course, take Synergies. Any Synergy you see will give you back resources and heal you. There's no reason for you not to take them, unless it's a negative effect from an enemy, in which case be careful and understand the mechanics. Good for you. You don't have to worry too much about your DPS because it's done easily, so you've got more time to pay attention to those mechanics, so now they make more sense. Also, we've got three different types of armor worn, so we get a 2% bonus to all three resources three times. Light, medium, and heavy are being used. We get three bonuses. We are, of course, a high elf. You can be any race you like. This game is built on the foundation of choice. Just like every other Elder Scrolls game, races do have bonuses, but also any way you want to play is allowed. So there is no rule to this. Pick what you like. However, I have chosen this for the particular passives that we've got, and this will give you 
extra bonuses for this setup if you want to use it. If you want to use something else, you will still get their bonuses, but it will be slightly different, so you might have to adjust accordingly. Now, this will give you resources back for using resources. Basically, if you use an ability, the lowest um, bar is what you're going to get back. So if you use a Magicka skill, you'll get Stamina back. If your Stamina bar was higher and you use a Stamina skill, you get Magicka back. Technically speaking, we're never using a Stamina skill. So if I use a Damage Shield, Wall of Elements, Execute, Crit Surge, whatever, if I cast any of those skills, I will get 625 Stamina back once every six seconds. That maintains your CC bar, so you can dodge, break, and block more. Also, when you're using a channeled ability or a cast time ability, you actually take less damage. The heavy attack counts as a channel. That will count. Maximum Magicka is 2k, highest you can get in the game alongside the Breton, and increases your weapon and spell damage, which is also the highest in the game, but that also is shared with Orc or Dark Elf. Technically speaking, again, there's no right or wrong, but these bonuses are really nice. Survival and resource management, flat bat damage bonuses, win-win. If you wanted to go over any other race, you would just have to consider their differences. But every race is possible. This is important. Medicinal use. We're using tripods. We don't need spell pots because we've got everything covered in our setup. So if you have this, you will benefit from full uptime of the three recovery bonuses that you get with the tripod. Activate it, gets a boost of resources, and gives you constant, constant major recovery bonuses for all three. Now, the interesting part. The gear. This has gone under some extensive testing. Regardless of how simple it is to use, I needed to make sure this was perfect. So if you go into trials, there's an option for you. If you go into dungeons, there's an option for you there. And if you don't go into anything, there's also an option for your main gear set to be crafted. Technically speaking, we are going to have some form of dungeon or out there loot regardless because that's how you make a build. You've got to have the right stuff, but there are going to be slight variations to them. And I'm going to tell you the differences too. I can hear people already screaming, have you tried Stormmaster? Obviously, I'm going to get to that. There are ways to skew that dummy by saying best and confusing people outside of understanding what you're actually seeing. Again, that's coming up. First of all, we're using the Star Sergeant Lightning stuff and... Sergeant Jewelry, two pieces, and the Sergeant Chest, because the highest resistance for a heavy piece, you might as well put it there. Maximum Magicka on the chest with Divines. Bloodthirsty on both of the necklace and the ring with the weapon and spell damage glyph that gives you stamina recovery. So if you're familiar with glyphs, Magicka damage and um, weapon damage, they have been changed. You can still use either of them. None of them make a difference now because they both give you both damage bonuses. But the Magical variant will give you Mag Recovery. The Stamina variant will give you Stam Recovery. Same damage, different recovery. We want Stam Recovery because our Magical bar is basically infinite. And we want to utilize the extra Stam Recovery so that we can keep up that bar in case we're in trouble. Now, how Bloodthirsty was changed is before, you used to have around sort of 90 weapon and spell damage at about 90%. And eventually it got to about 350 as the boss health goes lower, or any health goes lower. That has been dramatically changed, so your upfront burst is a hell of a lot more effective, which means um, your section of extra damage, especially for the Sorcerer, is much, much higher than it ever was before. Your consistent DPS, therefore, is a bit higher, and your execute kind of stagnates or gets a little bit stronger than it normally would. So there was a slight buff in the way that that is altered. Up front now, instead of 90, I think it might have been 70, actually. Instead of 70 weapon and spell damage at the beginning, you now get 270. So the 270 to 350 is a very, very gradual increase, but it's there with you early now. So you want blood first, you want all three jewelry pieces anyway. So Sergeant Staff, that counts as two pieces with a shot glyph and precise extra crit chance. This will give you health, health recovery, weapon and spell damage. When you deal damage with a heavy attack, you gain a stack for five seconds. If you do another heavy attack, you get another stack, and so on and so forth. Each stack will go up to four, and as long as you keep heavy attacking, at least once every five seconds, this will be maintained. So you'll have the maximum stacks, and you'll get the biggest bonus out of your heavy attacks. If you let it drop off, you have to start all over again. There is a bit of a cheese to this, by the way, because you can actually half wind it up before you even start. As you can see here, look on my right-hand side of my buff timers at the bottom there. That is the sergeant you're looking at. It's about to run out. If I stop the heavy attack, it actually counts them early on. So half a channel and it still counts. So you can wind them up nice and easy. Don't know when they're going to fix that, but that's the case at the moment. That also becomes a problem with the dummy, but I'll explain that later. 
These two, again, jewelry pieces of Sergeant, body piece, and the staff counts as two pieces. We use an infallible ether. This is from the Craglon Trials. You do not need to go onto Veteran because there isn't a perfected version. Just go into the Craglon Trials. It drops from there. Go to Ethereum Archive. Most people plug there more than anywhere else. Pretty easy to get hold of, especially on normal. Now, this will give you a crit chance bonus. A crit chance bonus again, weapon and spell damage, and give you minus layer at all times in instance content. Your heavy attacks deal 900 additional damage with your fully charged heavy attacks, and they're afflicted with minor vulnerability for 10 seconds, increasing their damage by 5%. Their damage taken, that is. So, as you can see on this target here, let me get the whole thing done. That debuff there lasts for 10 seconds. That's minor vulnerability. Bear in mind, however, this, if you knock that off balance, that's minor vulnerability too, because that is tied to concussion. Technically speaking, we have minor vulnerability borderline on tap, so we don't need it for that benefit, but we'll take it as a free bonus anyway, just in case there's a downtime. We can now guarantee that. The 900 extra damage is essentially for the pop at the end of the heavy attack. It's just very, very dramatic. And this has been on the build, especially Easy Stalk, for six years and still very, very strong. It does increase per tick and it does increase the overall pop at the end and it doesn't have any requirement. You just heavy. You don't need to build anything up. You don't need to crit or not crit. You don't need to apply any status effects. You just do it. And it's light armor. Divines on everything, magic glyph on everything. Medium armor is on the shoulder, which is slime crawl. That is the highest crit bonus you'll get from any one piece outside of mythics. And you just want that one piece there in that way if you can but you can go light if you want more penetration and slightly more crit chance. That's a choice for you, but you'll lose a little bit of resources. So, what are your options? If you are scared of this trial stuff or you haven't got it yet, go for it. It's mega. But you can go with this one here. Uh, not medium, light. New Moon's Acolyte. In light... This is incredibly effective for this build, both solo and in group content. It's even really, really solid in trials, especially when you've got people that can't maintain buffs and debuffs. That's very important to note, by the way. You've got a pen bonus there. Now, alongside Aether, these two are extremely close. What you will lose over time, though, is the more buffs and bonuses you have in your group, the more effective Aether will be because of the stack and bonuses for damage. So... Everyday use, this is absolutely perfect. Don't worry if you don't have the trial stuff. You will do very, very well. Again, in groups and solo, you will actually do a little bit more than this sometimes because you've got the pen bonus. But once you get more and more and more buffs and bonuses in your group, then obviously it starts to uh, veer off a little bit. Not enough to notice for the, for the purpose of effectiveness, though. You'll still do everything in the game. The other option, which I don't recommend, but I will state that you can use, is the Storm Master. Now, I know there's conflicts about this and everyone assumes it's burst. Granted, it does give one of the highest damages uh, bonuses to a heavy attack, but I'm going to tell you why it's not quite as effective as Aether with this particular build and why the dummy tells you differently. So what you have to consider here is the passives I already went over. This is a medium set. Aether is a light set. This enhances your heavy attacks and all of your other damage and gives you crit chance. The light armor passives that you've got with this are almost 5k pen and a 5% increase to critical chance. The medium bonuses, you remove the 5% critical chance and increase it by 10% increased critical damage. You remove all of the pen and increase it by 10% spell damage and weapon damage. So you've got some flat bonuses and you've got some crit bonuses, but you've got less crit chance. So more damage from crits, less likely to do it. No pen. Now, this requires you to critically damage your target with the end pop of a fully charged heavy attack in order for it to stack the bonus. You get 20 seconds worth of extra heavy attack damage. That can happen every 10, but if you don't crit, you won't get this bonus versus Aoife that guarantees it every time. In testing, I've done as many as seven full heavy attacks in a row, which is almost two lots of off balance, start and finish at least, one finishing and another one about to start, and it has not fired. That's a big negative to your DPS. However, let's just say best case scenario, it fires all the time. You can technically get more out of the heavy attack, but it depends on your buffs and bonuses. On the dummy, you will find that this does more than ether. The reason for that is you don't have all the penetration bonuses on medium armor. So the dummy gives it to you with 100% uptime on those bonuses. If you have Alkosh, Tremor Scale, Minor Breach and Major Breach, you're basically done. 
But how many times do you have 100% uptime on every single target for minor breach, major breach, Alkosh, and Tremor scale? You don't. There are big gaps. But in that test, you have your penetration capped. And because of the crit damage bonus you get from medium, you have your crit damage capped 125%. So you are hitting your maximum cap for the most contrib uh, contributing stats on any build. On the light armor setup, however, you are over penetrating, which means you don't get a bonus. And you are under crit damage, which means you have room for more. So when the two go up against each other on the dummy and one does 4K more than the other, the other one has everything. This is missing 10% crit damage and 10% weapon and spell damage, which you can still get from some of the buffs and bonuses that are missing on the dummy. The dummy has short of about 20 plus buffs, bonuses from sets, skills, or synergies that do not exist. They exist in the game, they exist in your groups, they exist in the community, people use them all the time, but they don't exist on the dummy. So it is an invalid side-by-side -side test. But what we do gain from that knowledge is the fact that this one is missing something and still only 3 or 4k apart. In actual content, where there are gaps, because your pen is so high and your crit chance is higher, this one, Ether, actually outperforms Stormmaster. It's only when every single buff and bonus in the game is applied, apart from the crit damage bonus, which you can get from Nanatuck, Helmet, or whatever. That's the only time you'll see a difference. So the dummy will show you different numbers. Content is completely different. That's not to say you can't use it. You most definitely can. But it's not as effective as it is made out to be in comparison. There are downsides. You could have downtime on the set. You could have missing buffs and bonuses. Whereas this one, all you need on Aoife is someone to taunt it. Taunt and Tremor Scale alone is you cap penetration. You're done. So even a basic dungeon build can do it. Not to say there's necessary dungeon or trial builds, but I mean, sometimes you change stuff for that. Again, the choice is yours. They both do play the same, but there are bonuses and negatives to either side, depending on what your group has. Someone saying that they have 100% uptime on Alkosh is unrealistic. 100% uptime on Minor or Major Breach, maybe. 100% uptime on Tremor Scale. Depends if they overlap the taunt or not. But all the buffs and bonuses required to maintain that damage that Storm Master is supposed to do is not always going to be there. And even then, you're still missing a bonus for Ether. You're missing the 10% crit damage that you can gain from other places. So again, the choice is yours. Hopefully that made some sense. But as you can see here, there's a big list of stuff and there's even been stuff deleted. All of these do really, really well. But Pillar and Nern, less. Numen Acolyte, less in medium by about 10k, more in light, because, again, because of passives and bonuses in actual content. On the dummy, it reads differently. Kinraz, again, not too bad, not better than Ether. Unfathomable, also good. Red Mountain, also good. Azure Blight, all of these were good, but Ether topped out versus all of them in actual content by about somewhere between 5 to 10k DPS differences. Between Ether and Stormmaster in content, in everyday situations, in dungeons, trials, arenas, and solo, if we're talking single target, there was sometimes as much as a 10k gap for Ether. It was higher. On the dummy, about a 3 or 4k gap for Stormmaster. It depends on who you want to listen to. Do you want to listen to a dummy hump, or do you want to take it into content and find out what it really does? Again, just to underline, you can use Eva. It is okay to do so. But I've just explained the differences. Now, obviously, last but not least, we are going to go over the one ring. This is very simple. It's a mythic item. Put weapon and spell damage on it with a stam recovery. Bloodthirsty, obviously. But while you've got this active, you cannot swap bars. At all. You have minor berserk, minor courage, major brutality, major sorcery, major prophecy, major savagery, minor force, minor protection, major resolve, minor mending, minor fortitude, minor intellect, minor endurance, minor heroism, minor slayer, minor agus, and empower. Empower gives you an 80% increase to your heavy attacks. It stacks of off balance. It's amazing. Everything here is front loaded as hell to give you recovery, survival, and damage. The downside is you cannot use the other five abilities on your back bar or another ultimate. So you lose half of your potential setup and you gain from having these bonuses 100% of the time. Bear in mind, if you're not familiar with how these work, if you have a major bonus next to a minor bonus of the same type, they stack. If you have two the same, they do not. So if someone tries to give you Empower, it won't stack with it. If someone tries to give you Minor Slayer, it won't stack with it. Bear in mind, we have got Minor Slayer on Aoife, 
which is also built into this as well. So they don't technically stack, but if you don't have the full set and you're using um, a different set of gear, so if you're using Storm Masters, for example, or you're using the crafted version, then of course you will still have Minor Slayer regardless. Very handy indeed. And even with that minor variable there, Aoife still top topped it out. Anyway, now we've got that boring stuff out of the way. Let's look at the champion points. Do, 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 do. Here we go. So these passive bonuses here, if you're very new to this, don't panic. These are white or yellow, and they are flat. Once you buy them, they stay with you forever. The blue ones, however, are slottables. Much of the red ones in the red tree and the green ones in the green tree. You have four slottables per tree that you can choose from out of all these. You can only slot four at a time. What we've done on this particular build is optimized it for its overall purpose. It's maximum damage output at the same time as your survival and recovery and all that kind of stuff. The blue tree is quite simple. Get the yellow ones whenever you can, but they do unlock other trees. So 10 points into the crit chance one will unlock this tree. You want these two bonuses. You want raffle strikes to give you an overall damage boost to everything. Bear in mind there is a cap for weapon and spell damage for light and heavy attacks, but flat bonuses can still enhance them, including crits. So once you get to a certain point, especially if you're using medium armor, you can get to your light and heavy attack cap quite quickly, and then the rest just stack on top. For medium, uh, for light armor, obviously we don't have the extra weapon and spell damage bonus, but you can still gain more from that. So it's uh, it's one of those things where if you are already capped, the extra buff doesn't help you, but if you're not already capped, then it does. This will be very beneficial regardless of the weight you're using to all your damage. Air of effect from all of elements, heavy attack, execute the lot. So will this, it will give you more critical damage, Bear in, bear in mind, of course, on the medium build, you will have capped resist, uh, capped crit damage on the dummy, but on the light, you won't. You'll be missing 10%. You can still get that. If you can simulate that, you'll see the actual difference and you'll see that Aoife does more. This is what you want to use in everyday content for the most part. So this is 8% bonus instead of 10, because this one you have to be behind the target. So a quick swap out here. If you're behind the target all the time, use this one. If you're not, use this one. There's 2% in it, but... That's the difference. If you're not behind it, that one's useless. This tree over here, unlock this for 10 points, gives you penetration bonuses, great. Unlock these when you can, increase the damage, and of course, status effect chance. Very helpful. But for unlocking this, you can unlock this. This will increase your light and heavy attack damage by 20%. No, light and heavy. Then for unlocking this tree, regardless whether you get that slotable or not, this tree is open. And this will give you lots of bonuses that you can take advantage of, but again, to be optimal towards the build, this one here, Deadly Aim, will increase the damage of single target damage. Now, you could argue that you've got loads of AoE, which you do, but the stronger the single target heavy attack that you apply, the more splash damage it does. If you enhance your air effect, you do it in reverse. You have a lesser heavy attack and you have lesser AoE. Weird how that works, but it's true. So this for your enhanced heavy attack damage alongside of this. Bear in mind, this also contributes towards your glyph. That is single target as well. And then crit damage, regardless of which one you pick, alongside all damage. Hopefully that made sense. This tree is very simple. This increases your max health. Stack it up. This increases your armor. You don't need any prerequisites for that. These yellow ones you can unlock in your own time, but this is the path you want to take. 15 in here. 10 in here. Half of this, so 10 in here. Once you've done that, you unlock this tree. Get this and this. Stamina from getting kills, magical from getting kills, you're never going to run out of juice. Simple as that. You can max this one if you want, but unlock 10 points and it'll get these two. So slot those four. Green tree doesn't make a shit's bit of difference. They're all quality of life anyway, but here's some recommendations for you. Unlock this as soon as possible so you use less soul gems when you're charging up weapons because your weapons don't take so much charge. This one to give more higher quality loot from chests. This to give you increased timer on your food. This to give you a chance to not even use your potion but still benefit from it. And this one to make you faster between fights. We're quite nippy anyway, but going from one fight to another, when there's no combat involved, it's quite handy to be faster. Now we're going to explain the rotation, which is ridiculously easy. As we've mentioned earlier, you have your resistance bonus and extra magicka. Don't touch it. You have your damage shield. Don't touch it unless you need it. You have your execute. Don't touch it until the health is low. And you basically need to maintain these two skills. Crit Surge to keep your heals up. Wall of Elements to keep your damage up. That's it. If you need to block a big, big heavy, activate this, of course. That's what it's there for. But outside of that, it's passive. If you get in trouble, activate the damage shield. Of course, it's what it's there for. Outside of that, it's passive. How? Went over this earlier. 
Extra weapon and spell damage for every sorcerer ability slotted. It's not useless for being there. It gives you a benefit. Both of them do. So what do you do in combat? This. There's your wall. There's your heavy attack. That's it. That is literally it. Maintain this once every 32 seconds. Reapply this every 10 seconds. And maintain that. Now, if you want to see where the timers come from, that's very important, obviously. Go into options. Go into combat. And go into ability timers. Ah, ha, ha. Activate this. You can see how long is left on it. So, wall down. Heavy attack. And just keep heavy attacking. Over and over and over until it's about to run out. Recast it. If your ultimate is ready, drop it. And that is it. Now, what you can do, if you want to be a little bit more sneaky, is you can take advantage of this skill. I know lots of people like to put on loads of extra skills and make it more complicated. You don't need to. This can double dip. It's damage over time by default. But if you reactivate it, because we've got too many resources, this will pop more damage. You reapply the damage over time, so that's no extra damage, but the pop does give you more. So what you can do is you can apply it and then recast it over and over and over. And that will give you more damage over time in area of effect over a longer period of time because you don't have to have gaps, but it will also give you more area of effect damage and single target damage because you're constantly popping this in AoE. Now, how that looks on these guys is really simple. Again, small group. Wall down. I could just heavy attack all day long and never let go of it. Or I could apply this over and over and over and the damage will go up. Now, again, this is capable of all content. It doesn't matter whether you're in a group, a trial or solo. You can do everything in the game with this with no changes required. But here's a massive tip for how to reapply that wall without messing up your heavy attacks. Most people do this. They heavy and they let go. They heavy and they let go. They heavy. Don't, don't do that. Hold it. Hold your heavy attack and halfway through it, activate the skill without letting go of your heavy. It will queue it up for you. So look very carefully. I've pressed wall of elements already and it fires. I've pressed it again and it fires. Look at the skill on the Y down there. You'll see it pulse. When it pulses, I've casted it. There's the heavy, there's the pulse. Heavy, pulse. I have not let go of my heavy attack button. And I can queue up the skill, ready for it to flawlessly animation cancel itself on a 100% accurate cooldown timer. And that's it. And you can do the same with your crit surge as well. If you heavy attack that and cast crit surge halfway through, done. Now at execute, people panic. They're like, do I heavy attack? Do I wall of elements? Do I, what do I do? And you'll see people do this with their wall. They'll double cast it by accident because they panic. They'll half a heavy attack. They'll fire off this and then they'll do this. Wrong. Don't do that. Keep your wall up once every 10 seconds. What did I just teach you about animation canceling? Hold on to that heavy attack. Activate your execute. Hold on to it. Activate it. Hold on to it. Activate it. Wall's ready. Fire. Back to, back to execute. You lose no time on your heavy attack. There is no gap. There is no downtime on absolutely anything and you add the execute to the end of it. It's not one or the other. It's not heavy attack all the way through or use execute. Use both. Heavy, pop. Best of both worlds. Now something that is going to be a bit of a, an eye opener for some. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. It's very easy to manipulate that very, very rigged scenario there because that's not real. That has very, very specific buffs and bonuses that you can actually work around in order to make your numbers look better. So sometimes your build could be very, very effective in content, but that dummy show you different numbers. For argument's sake, if you really want to know what you can get on that particular dummy, depending on the version you're using, you're looking at somewhere between 75 and 80, maybe even 85 if you're really, really lucky. And when I say lucky, that is a fact because your burst can be anywhere fluctuating between 90 to 140k DPS for the first 5 to 10 seconds. Depending on crits and buffs and bonuses that apply at the right time, that can be the difference. And that does make a different, consistent or stagnant amount of DPS throughout the whole test. So if you get a very low burst, you're probably sitting around 60, 70k. If you get a very high burst, you can get 80, 85. You don't need any extra complications. Just get into content and hit stuff. That is not going to sell everything for you. But again, if you are a very inexperienced player, 
not very good with DPS, or just struggling in content in general, that and that will guarantee you double or even triple the damage you're doing right now, and it gives you loads of time to pay attention to mechanics. One more thing is going to blow your fucking mind. This, as you can see here, watch. Oh, I got rid of the dummy. That's new. That was introduced in this update, and that's been manipulated to shit. Before, what you would do is you would attack a target. Look at the timer up in the top left-hand corner where combat metrics is. I'm in combat. And that's going to change all the time, and the time is going. If I let go of that, the time is technically still ticking until that decides to finish the fight. I've got 10 seconds of me doing absolutely nothing. That is going to fluctuate my damage output. Because now it's calculating no damage and then thinning out the numbers. However, what you can do now is you can get rid of the dummy straight away. And people have got wise to this because they've been pre-buffing like fuck. How have they pre-buffed? Simple. Your fourth heavy attack on Sergeant is the one that gives you the most damage. During off balance, that's when you get the most out of your heavy attack. The off balance on this target goes for the first second sec seven seconds of your initial combat, as you can see there. So what do they do? Do they wind up their heavy attacks, have 15 second immunity, and then hopefully get loads of damage out of the next phase? Nope, do they fuck? They do this. One tick, two tick, three tick. Within the next five seconds, dump that dummy, hit this one. Full stacks of Sergeant on burst. Big, big difference. That is the problem. That is why the numbers look really, really high in some places and you're worried about why you can't reach the same. It's very easy to manipulate stuff like that. The dummy is there for target practice. It's not gospel. You can use it as a tool to gauge what you should and shouldn't be doing in certain scenarios based on stats, numbers, figures, whatever, but it doesn't underline an ideal situation in every piece of content. It just shows you what happens if those buffs and bonuses are there versus the setup that you're currently using. That's it. Anyway, uh, now that the boring stuff is out of the way, basically rotation, keep up this, put down this, hold heavy attack. That's it. Now we're going to do fashion. So we are using the same stuff as the last video, but if you missed it, Wayward Guardian Helmet in heavy. I had to think about that. An Lyalark's Chosen Jerkin, that's a light chest. Fangler Shoulders in light. Silver Rose Gloves, also in light. Fargrave Guardian Sash, which is, I believe, in light as well. Yes, it is. Zivkin Guards, which are medium. And Ancient Daedric Shoes, which are light. All of those are basically black and gray. Now, technically, the color we are using for the black is this one over here, which is Legate's Black. And we're also using Perfect's uh, Windhelm Steel, actually, for the gray. But gray and black overall. And the staff is, of course, a very shiny one. Spell Scar Lithoram's Staff. That's a shiny one. Don't remember where I got it from. Uh, you might have to look it up. Anyway, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully it wasn't too overcomplicated. It's a very simple build. You've got all your survival and damage and sustainability built into one without complications. If you want to change that, that is up to you, but that negates the point of it being as easy as it is, and you will get different results. If you're not following on the channel, of course, hit that sub button, it's free. If you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the website zonogaming.com, where this written guide will be. And also you can help support on Patreon, where you will get individual perks, bonuses, and benefits for supporting financially. And you'll also get private access to the private Discord server. Ooh, yes. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.